Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Deha. Today we're out in the machine shop instead of down in the electronics lab. This video isn't really about the router, the machine behind me. It's a CNC machine. Uh, I do videos on that as well. But this particular topic is going to be explaining how this little Raspberry Pi Pico helped me take this from a really good machine to an awesome machine. I use the CNC router for a variety of projects, including uh, isolation milling for PCB or circuit boards. And that's actually been most of its uh, applications since I've created it. However, I also do 3D carving on it. That's something new that I'm exploring. And I'll be doing some videos on that as well for the woodworkers out there. But it's a very fun uh, process. Uh, just, you don't do a lot of work, you kind of sit back and watch it happen. I kind of like that at this age. Uh, but what I've done with this machine, or what my objective was with this phase of it on the machine, was to take it from being able to run a single tool over the whole, through the whole program to create an object, to adding much more functionality by creating an automatic tool changer. Now, I did that perhaps the most difficult way possible. Uh, it required a lot of engineering uh, with a variety of devices over here. Um, and I have other videos on those and uh, how they work and operate and all that. But our focus is only going to be today on how this solved one of the biggest problems I had to deal with. In order to change tools, I need to tighten up this nut, which holds the tool bit, into the collet. Normally, when you do it manually, you use two large wrenches, one to stop the spindle from turning and one to tighten the nut. But in the case of this, where it's automated, you need a motor to do it. And uh, in the background there, you will see the encoder for the stepper motor, which goes through a gearbox, and then there's a shaft coming up with a socket on it like this that contacts the nut and tightens it, or loosens it to remove the tool. Now, importantly, what I needed for this system to work was I needed to tighten it, say, for example, at 70% torque, so that I would be assured I have enough power to loosen it. So I'll tighten it at 70% torque, and then I will loosen it at 100% torque. And that was the difficult thing to overcome. Looking at the schematic first, to help explain everything, the first device is the Pico. That's this device right here. That connects to the stepper drive, which in turn controls the stepper motor, and then attached to the stepper motor is the encoder on the back of it. And we showed you that a moment ago. Now, between the Pico and the Pololu TIC 825 stepper drive, I have a level shifter, very inexpensive breakout board that uh, helps translate the voltage differences from 3.3 volt logic on the Pico to 5 volt logic on the TIC 825 stepper drive. We've also got on the circuit board, which I'll show you in the real world, a little bar graph LED, and all I'm really using it for is to have a couple of LEDs so that I can monitor which level of current I'm currently outputting to the stepper motor for tightening and loosening our tool bits. Now, input to the Pico is an output from the CNC that's discrete. It's just like any output on the Pico, only it's coming from the CNC. I'll have uh, a, a one output that will specify the torque level as being idle, meaning it's okay to just sit there. Another one that's at very low. The next torque level is my tightening torque level at approximately 70%. And then the high level is 100% torque level. 
Now the CNC can only talk to the Pico via discrete outputs like that, which is pretty normal, pretty common. In order for the TIC-825 to accept that information, it has to be communicated to it via a serial interface. The CNC control cannot provide a serial interface to the TIC-825. And that's the purpose of the PICO. We give it from the CNC a command via a simple output, either on or off, to select which torque level. The Pico looks at that and says, oh, okay, uh, he wants us to do that, so I will serially send the command to the Pololu, tick A25, and I'll also turn on an LED to show him that I actually performed that action. And that's how the circuit works. Now we'll take a look at the actual components in the control. This is an overall view of the inside of the electronics control panel. This is the actual CNC control board. This is its input module. All these over here are the output modules or output relays. Relative to what we're concerned with is, of course, the CNC, the outputs, our Pico, that level shifter, our LED, or I, I used a bar graph display, but only using four of the segments to get the different colors. And this is the Pololu uh, TIC 25 stepper driver. So this is actually wired all the way back over to the stepper drive. And then it receives the direction and uh, velocity signals from the CNC. And all we're doing is communicating to it through a serial interface from the Pico. So this selects the output by setting one of these outputs high, which we read over here through these blue wires. I look at that, I translate that into a serial command, I pass that out, send it into this stepper drive, and that in turn then controls the motor. Here's a little closer view, again the Pico, level shifter, bar graph display, of which I'm just using four of the LEDs, and then back here is the stepper driver. Okay, now we're picking up a tool out of the magazine. We'll see that we're in low torque. I output one, as indicated by the Pico, with the blue LED. Now we're in the tightening torque setting, 70%. You'll notice output 3 is active from the CNC controller. You'll hear the stepper motor stalling. That's perfectly normal for a stepper motor and perfectly fine. That's why I kind of chose that stepper motor as opposed to a DC motor. Now we're re-engaging. We're doing a search, so we're in low current. It's collet in, or the nut and socket is engaged, so I switch to high current to unscrew the nut and loosen that collet. It'll unwind a couple of turns, about three turns, and then it'll go back forward and put a little tension on the collet so that the tool doesn't just simply fall out of the collet. And that's the whole process for loosening the collet, tightening a collet, and all the little subtle things that you have to go through to get a tool in and out of this spindle. Now we're back down here at the electronics bench, and it makes a little better environment for me to go over the code. Now, as you saw out there on the demonstration on the actual machine, the Pico is only serving to translate discrete outputs from the CNC, four of them, 
into a serial command that we send to that stepper driver so that we can control the amount of torque or current going to the stepper motor. That's all that's really going on. Now the code or the program, uh, let me call that up here, uh, probably the bulk of the, the lines of data in here are mostly comments so that I could keep track of things a year or two later when I go back to look at it. Uh, but real quickly, uh, I won't bore you to death with all these details. Uh, there's just some information at the top about the driver in the motor, uh, connections between um, the CNC and the Pico, connections between the Pico and the bar graph display. And then this little line here, section here, is kind of important um, in this application because this is uh, the information from their data sheet from Pol Pololu, um, where I would uh, look up the, the code to set the current. So I, I would, if I wanted 762 milliamps of current, I would use code number seven. And by the way, Pol Pololu does a remarkable job of detailing their products. This data sheet, I think, is 100, 213 pages of data. Um, it's just remarkable. So, uh, you know, again, supporting local uh, vendors and suppliers uh, rather than just buying off of Amazon or uh, AliExpress where you don't get any documentation. Sometimes it's really great value added information there from an actual vendor such as Pololu. Now back to our code, this would have been our table that I needed to work with with the driver that I have and the motor I've got. We're going to import the UART library, uh, typical from the machine, get the pins, and a micro time library so I can do some time related things. We're going to set up some inputs or outputs as needed for our LEDs and for our inputs from the CNC. We're going to set up the COM port. Uh, that's going to be very critical, of course. We're using uh, a basic UART, not I squared C or SPI, but basic UART communications uh, for the TIC uh, A25. There's a few uh, functions that had to be created to make it easy to send this byte data. We are sending to from the PICO to the uh, TIC 825, a 2-byte serial command, so they need to be kind of ordered correctly. And uh, that's all these little uh, functions are really doing, just kind of formatting that command so it goes out properly. Uh, then we're going to get into a function where we set uh, the bar graph uh, to the, the correct light on, and it's being passed the driver current. So based on that, it'll know what to do as far as which uh, LEDs should be on and which are off and turn them on and off accordingly. Uh, we're going to uh, do a couple of things here. Exit safe start puts the TIC A25, it's a command going to it, to put it into the mode for uh, operation. Uh, the uh, last driver current state, um, that makes it so that I don't have to keep sending commands to uh, the TIC-825 uh, every time something changes. If it's already in, in low current mode, I won't send it again, the command to go in the low current mode. In fact, as I recall correctly, it seemed to confuse it when we did that. Uh, then just uh, another uh, couple of, of variables to help keep things straight. Moving into the main loop, uh, it's a typical endless main loop that you'd have on a microcontroller. We're going to check each of the inputs coming from the CNC. That's what this input idle current, uh, the value, if it's currently on or off. And then if uh, the last command was either setting it to idle on or off. And that gets back to that thing where I only want to send a command to the TIC-825 if something changed. If nothing changed, don't do anything. Uh, but we will set our current value to the required uh, uh, a value from our chart up above here. And then uh, that would set it. And then uh, that sends it to the TIC-825 in the function up above. 
and then we're going to record our last uh, state that we changed to. In this case, it would be idle. We'll set the bar graph so that it's showing the right color LED, and I'm also printing it out, and that's helpful for debugging. And then that just continuously loops. One thing I do add in a, we'll call it a headless uh, Pico, if you will, uh, where you don't have any way of really knowing if it's operating or not, because a lot of time it just looks like it's doing nothing. I add a heartbeat on there, and in this case I'm using the onboard LED, and every 10,000 times through this loop, as counted here, I'll toggle that LED on and then off, and that just constantly happens. If that isn't blinking on and off, then I know something went wrong and, and my control loop died and crashed. Uh, and that's a good handy uh, thing to do with a lot of uh, things that you make where you're not going to be connected to a computer to see that it's running. And it might be sitting, but you don't know what it's doing. This is how you get that simple feedback to know that the loop is running and it's running properly. And then that is really it for the whole program logic. And in typical, a microcontroller is used to take and apply logic based on inputs and outputs. And that's exactly what we're doing with this Pico on the CNC machine. And in truth, uh, in this particular project, I could very easily use an Arduino or any other type of microcontroller to accomplish the task. But the Pico with MicroPython and just the way it programs and works and operates and its wonderful cost of $4 provided an astounding $4 solution to a very complex problem that was not easily uh, surmountable. So this wraps up this video on how I converted my CNC from a good machine to an awesome machine by giving it the ability to automatically change tools. Thanks for watching, and if you're looking for more information on the CNC, I'll put links down below uh, to the other um, videos that are more oriented toward the CNC as opposed to, in this case, the Pico and what we're trying to do with it. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.